I saved over $4,000. Well, sir, so this question in a nutshell is Hey y'all, what's up, what going on? It's your girl Nika of Traveling with Nika and I'm back with another video. Today's video is going to be a 2023 Q&A video and I'm going to be answering y'all's questions, okay? Some of these questions were sent in via like the question box on IG stories or DMs and all of that. So I basically compiled everything and I'm going to be answering those today. The first question is, where do you plan to travel to in 2023 and how are you deciding? So that's a really good question. I would say for me, 2023 travels is definitely already underway. Um, a lot of the trips that I have planned for 2023, they are either going to be surrounding like certain events or um, also just bucket list places that I always wanted to visit. So just as an example, like I wanted to go skiing for the first time. So I planned a ski trip, right? Um, I want to also attend another like travel influencer creator conference this year because I really enjoyed the one that I did last year. It's not going to be with the same, you know, under the same um, conference, but I am going to be attending another one in 2023 that's going to be even bigger than the one that I attended last year. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to the, the same, um, the one with No Madness Fest. I'm not sure what they're doing this year. Who knows? I might be able to go to that too. But for example, that's one of my travel plans for this year. Another one is going to be visiting another world wonder. So if you didn't know, there are basically seven world wonders. And I've been to one out of seven. And I went to Chichen Itza. I think I pronounced that wrong, but y'all could look it up. Um, and I have my Mexico vlog still up, so you, you should see that. Go, let me link that, okay? Um, but yeah, so I went to that um, World Wonder in 2020. I think I ended up decided that I would just pretty much try to go to all of them. Not in any like rush fashion, but I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So another 2023 travel goal of mine is basically to visit another World Wonder. And I'm excited. I'm not going to tell y'all just yet some of the countries I'm going to be going to and states, but you just need to subscribe because the vlogs are gonna be coming, okay? We outside. The next question is, do I prefer like soft luggage or hard luggage? And I would say I don't really have a true preference between the two. I did purchase hard luggage for the first time, I think 2022 or 2021, something like that. I think 2022. It was the American tourist. So that's who I have all of my luggage with. Definitely good quality. And I would say the difference that I have seen that's very obvious with the hard luggage is when that check luggage, you know, is going through all the shenanigans through baggage claim, you can definitely see more of the wear and tear on the hard luggage because like the material could like stretch and things like that. So that's the only thing I would say, but I don't really have a big preference between the two. I do, well, I have been kind of using my hard luggage a little bit more lately than the soft one, but... I guess that's just because I want to make sure I use it my things, right? Because I had the soft luggage for a while. So the next question is basically about like me traveling a lot. Like if I travel full time and things like that. And honestly, I would say that I travel full time just because of the frequency that I travel at. So for example, in 2023, I traveled for 12 months. So I basically traveled every single month where I had a trip, right? And that was over like 40 something flights that I took in 2023. With that amount of traveling, I consider that as me traveling full time. It doesn't mean that I don't have other things going on, but it just means that I still do consider the frequency that I travel at, at like a very like, you know, high pace. So with the effort that I have to put into planning these trips, yeah. The next question is how many states have I visited? And at this present time, it will be 28 states. So I'm almost at my 30th state milestone and I'm very excited about that because that's one of my 2023 travel goals is to get to that 30. And talking about states, another question is basically asking me like my favorite, um, you know, state or area to travel to in the U.S. And I think I would say more on cities. A lot of my cities that I definitely love, love, love is Atlanta. I love me some New York as well. 
and honestly i would say i really enjoyed my trip to memphis tennessee the food was banging 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 and i did learn a lot of black history when i went to memphis and that's one of the things if you've been you know watching me for a while you know that one of the reasons that i want to travel to all 50 states is to learn more about you know black history in the various states so i would say memphis definitely gave me you know that okay like mm, yes i wouldn't really say i have like a least favorite pat to be honest but i probably could answer that maybe when i'm like maybe at my 40th state maybe i don't know yet Okay, next question. Elsa. So this question, in a nutshell, is basically asking me, like, who I'd be traveling with? Because, like, sometimes, like, you know, I may not basically be showing, like, the people, but I would be vlogging. and Or they may hear me say, like, you know, me, we, they just want to know, like, if I travel by myself or, you know, what have you. So when it comes to the people that I travel with, it's definitely a mix. And I also don't share all of my travels like online as well. There are trips that I just choose to not vlog or not share at all. So just keep that in mind. There may be times where I'm vlogging and I'm only going to just vlog myself. Like I'm not going to like include the person or the people that I'm traveling with. And that's okay. That's okay best way to save for travel so i think i did a video on saving for travel or budgeting for travel i don't know i got all type of videos one of the things i would say is get a travel fund y'all hear me say this over and over and over and over i'm not gonna stop saying it get a travel fund that's a savings account that you dedicate basically saving up for traveling you put money in there when you can if you work a job you know that can split up your paycheck you put aside money automatically. If you get extra money, put it aside. And that's definitely a great way to try to save up for travel. Um, if you are in a position to try to look into travel hacking, I do have a travel hacking playlist. Um, and I will just link that above. And that saves me tons of money as well. In 2023, I saved over $4,000 by travel hacking. So... I'm just saying, get y'all life together, okay? So that you can start travel hacking and save your coins like me, okay? The next question is, when did I move from the BVI to the US? So I moved um, after I completed community college in the Virgin Islands. So once I finished that degree, I moved and I moved because of university. So the other question is, how do I build confidence for solo travel? So when I saw this question, I was like, mm, this is a good question. So one of the ways I would say, I don't know if it's really confidence or how I guess maybe me being comfortable with solo travel, I would say that I do a lot of things on my own in my city already. So when I visit somewhere by myself, I kind of treat it the same way as if like, okay, well, this is my home and I'm gonna just like, you know, go out and like enjoy myself as I would in my own city. So to start out, I would definitely say to start doing things like by yourself and that will start getting you a little bit more comfortable with, you know, possibly doing a solo trip and doesn't have to be like, you know, this far, far away place. You can start with also doing like staycations, you know, in your city or the next city over. It could still be in your state, for example, if you live in the US, but you know. Um, it could still be really close, but if you live in the Virgin Islands, for example, you live on Tartola, like maybe do a staycation, you know, in Jazz Van Dyke or Anigada or Virgin Garda, you know, start small, basically. And I have a video on solo travel, so I'll link that above so you guys can watch that. The last question is recommendations for a girl's trip. And hmm, this is a really good one. I would say in recent travels... I would say one of my top girls trips was my birthday trip last year to Costa Rica. That was a whole vibe. And to me, it was a very affordable trip as well. Like my friends still talk about that Costa Rica trip to this day and how cheap the flight was and like just the cost of things once we got to Costa Rica. So I would say Costa Rica is definitely a good place for a girl's trip. Um, if you're trying to do like more like maybe some turn up type of vibe, if it's like stateside, I would say my girl trip to Vegas was pretty dope as well. And um, oh, Colombia was a vibe. So I'm only talking about recent trips. So I would say, yeah, 
Colombia was also a vibe when me and my friend went to Colombia. Like, it was a good mix of, like, oh, we had a good time, like, lit, you know, torn up. And then we also had a good time just by experiencing the food, the culture, and stuff like that in the country. So that's all I have for today's Q&A video. And I hope I answered all of y'all questions. Thank you guys for submitting them. And if you have more questions, just like DM me. Because who knows, if I get a whole bunch of questions, you never know. I might have to do another Q&A video sometime this year. So see you guys on the next video. Bye!